Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason Carr. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy. Today we are taking the 600,000 kilometer van to work. And if you don't believe me that it has 600,000 kilometers, that's 390,000 miles. Multiply that by 1.6. So in my last upload we had a little bit of audio trouble at the car show. So let's hope that this one's working. Okay, so today we are going to be talking a little bit about the 36 Dodge project and some of the things that Dad has been doing and trying to fix on the car to make it a little bit more drivable. And one of the things that he's noticed is just how much of a pig on fuel it is. It's got the big high-rise intake and the, uh, the big Thunder Series carburetor from Edelbrock and he says he can't drive it very far and he can almost watch the gas gauge go down so he's got a new Edelbrock Performer RPM intake and a new 600 CFM carburetor that he's going to be installing on the car and uh, we're going to give you a little bit of an update on that right now so at this point what we've done I haven't done anything <laughs> to be truthful this is all dad and Tim so so far what they've had to do uh, is they've torn the vehicle or torn the engine right down uh, taken the intake off and uh, they've taken a look at the valve train again because they still feel like they've got a little bit of noise in there but I'm chalking that up to these roller rockers um, giving a little bit of noise anyways we've got the Edelbrock RPM intake on there 600 CFM carb and by the looks of things other than the radiator it should be ready to start again so one of the other things that we've come across with this, since Dad's been driving it, he's noticed a little bit of uh, vibration in the drivetrain. So we feel like it's coming from the motor somewhere. And it's just ever so slight, but it's enough that it's hard to take it on a long trip anywhere, or even a, not even a really long trip, but just, you know, like on a day trip somewhere, and have to deal with that vibration. So we felt like uh, it was time to try a harmonic balancer and what we decided to go with was the Rattler and I will put the link to the Rattler and a picture of it right here so you can see what that looks like and the, the idea behind the Rattler is that it's got little chambers in it with weights in the chambers and when you shake it it rattles so it's got the little rattlesnake type deal as their theme but uh, anyways when this thing spins up the weight in the chambers will shift to help eliminate any uh, vibration uh, minor or even somewhat major according to the manufacturer and this is just a minor vibration so we're hoping that that will uh, fix that problem we ordered it it came in and when we went to put it on they sent us the wrong one now all small block Chrysler's are the same but the where it slides on to the crank looks like it was made for a small block Chev because it was such a small hole and on these Chryslers, the crank is quite a bit bigger. So we've got a new one on its way. Hopefully it'll be here in a couple of days. It's tying up a bay in the garage that could otherwise be making us some money. Thankfully, we aren't terribly, terribly busy in the shop right now. So it's not that big of a deal, but it'll be nice to get this car back together. Hopefully gain some fuel mileage on this thing for dad's sake, because uh, it seems like he was passing everything but a gas station. So we'll get the Rattler on. Rattler? Rattler? I forget what they call it. Anyways, we'll get it back on and get the radiator stuff back together and drive it again and hopefully uh, eliminate some of the issues that he was having with this. Now, you know, ever since we've been building this car, uh, I've showed you in past videos where we've had, you know, noises or little issues here or there with the motor. Well, that is unfortunately some of the issues that you're going to run into when you buy somebody else's project. This car was a project that was started and never finished. And so obviously dad bought it and he's finishing it now, but um, you just don't know sometimes the capabilities of the person who put the motor together. So did they know what they were doing and they did a good job? Um, do you take for granted that just because it runs that everything's okay? You just don't know. So a couple of little issues that granted, you've seen it. We've had this thing with the heads right off of it. Um, 
and I will put a link right here to the video where we found out what the tapping noise was uh, in the motor. So uh, we're just going to continue on with this. I think by now, once we get the Rattler on there, we will have that problem fixed. And as soon as we get it up and running again, we'll take you for a test drive and see how much better she works and give you an update on what the fuel economy uh, situation is. So as you can see, this is the high rise intake. And if you look really close down in through there, you can see the other side or you can see right out through the side of it. And as far as we can tell, the combination of the carburetor that we had on this thing and this high rise with the gap and I mean, you can basically just dump fuel right in it. This setup is made likely for the quarter mile, which is going to give you lots of performance in your car but it doesn't make for just regular street driving so that's why we decided to get rid of that and go with this other setup this setup that we're running on the 36 Dodge is the same setup that dad ran on his 37 Chev as far as being a small block Chev so it was a Edelbrock RPM a performer RPM uh, intake on that car as well with the Edelbrock 600 CFM carb. That's the same carburetor, exact same carburetor that I run on my car. And my car, before I changed the rear end gears, I was getting 20 miles to the gallon. Uh, with Dad's 37 Chev, uh, he was pushing about the same thing with the uh, fuel economy and still had you know lots of power at the wheels. So that's why we decided to go with this setup. It's proven, we know what its capability is as far as fuel economy and performance. So don't stray too far away from what you know. So we are sitting here at McDonald's, Junior and I, to grab some lunch and we just saw the most chromed out Kia Optima I've ever seen in my life. Take a look. That is some chrome. Love your car, Heather. So as we are walking out of McDonald's, we see an Alfa Romeo Giulia. And I've never seen one of these cars in person, but man oh man, I think they're a sharp looking car, especially the snout. Great looking rig. You get a chromed out Kia Optima and a Giulia all in one day. Go figure. And as you can see by the empty parking spaces here and over here, 03 Honda Civic is gone as well as the 09 Dodge Caliber. Again, a couple thousand bucks for these cars if they're in any kind of shape at all. Uh, people nab them right up very quickly. So uh, anytime we get them, if we feel that they're good enough to sell um, and they're inspected and they're like, you know, in, in good condition like that, maybe it needs a little bit of minor work. We'll do that, we'll sell them. Uh, we sell them cheap and we sell them as is. So Mama's Van is still here. Uh, we do have a couple of little things that we have been working away at, uh, not actively selling it uh, necessarily. So we did get the door here to open. We've got to get a handle for here, which they aren't very expensive. So we will get a handle for it. And uh, the only issue that we're running into right now is this. When we close it, this back latch from being closed for like almost a year and a half of the door not working has seized up to the point where it doesn't latch. So I can just kind of pull on it and pry on it. And if it's not latched properly, it leaves a light on the dash, let you know you've got a door jar. So um, we're going to tear that door apart on the inside, get that door latch uh, out and soak it in some penetrating fluid to help help. Uh, lubricate that and get any rust out of it. Hopefully get that back running again. We do have a couple of newer vehicles that have hit the lot. I say newer because this one here we've owned before. Uh, we sold this a couple of years ago and uh, the lady who had it decided it was time to upgrade so we got her into the red 2015 Ford Escape that we showed you uh, last week. So this is a 2013 Ford Fiesta with only 53,000 kilometers. Great little car in really good shape. I believe we put new tires on this car. So this one is ready to roll. 
Also, the 2014 Kia Rondo that I bought in North Bay, Ontario, finally showed up after a couple of weeks, and here it is. Now, this is a uh, nice looking vehicle. We still have the air conditioner to get fixed up on it. Other than that, we haven't had to spend any money on the car. North Bay, Ontario. If you don't know where North Bay, Ontario is, if you find Toronto on the map and you go north, way north, way north, you'll find North Bay. So it is out of the regular area for uh, transportation pickup. I probably will never buy another vehicle that far north again because it cost me about twice what it normally would to get a vehicle uh, from say Ottawa or Toronto and it's really not that far out of the way but just far enough that the transport companies just don't go that way very often so um, when we buy cars online we, we get a very good description we're able to see exactly what these cars uh, have as far as issues I bought the car I knew that the AC wasn't working but I also got a fairly good price on it as well so having getting a, a good price helps me pay for the transportation as well as get the AC fixed get it back here on my lot and uh, hopefully get it sold very quickly and last but not least I'm not sure if you guys remember uh, a quick little video that I did on this 2013 Kia Sorento uh, this vehicle sold very quickly and uh, it's a very nice vehicle We've, the customer has run into a small issue with hesitation under acceleration at low speeds. So he goes to put, on, put his foot on the gas and sometimes there's no gas there. The engine just revs up and there's nothing there. We contacted the Kia dealer and the Kia dealer suggested a couple of things that we try. We've done that. Uh, however, we are limited with our scan tool how far we can go. It's not throwing any codes. Um, the Kia dealer says that if they had the vehicle there they could do some test drives and hook up their computer see what they could find out so today we're sending junior and another driver to st john with the kia sorrento hopefully they can diagnose the problem with that and hopefully it doesn't cost us a fortune so uh, the fellow that owns it is one of our drivers he drives uh, for us once in a while when we go to pick up some vehicles uh, whether it be in fredericton st john moncton halifax wherever we need to go uh, we send drivers to go get our vehicles and this just happens to be one of them so he's been very good about it he's very patient a uh, very good guy and uh, we're going to hopefully get him uh, looked after here very quickly well guys that is going to conclude this video i want to give a shout out to the chevy dude and i'll put his information up above here so that you can take a look at his channel he is a fellow car dealer uh, actually he's a salesman at Bachman Chevrolet down in Louisville, Kentucky. And he's got a fairly big channel, uh, over 70,000 subscribers, and he's trying to grow his just like I'm trying to grow mine. As of right now, I'm sitting at 290 subscribers, and Mike is sitting at 71,000 and change. And what he's um, done for me is I sent him one of my letters. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that uh, he read my letter on uh, his vlog so I could be entered into a contest that he has right now where he's giving away a hundred dollar visa gift card for anybody that sends him something to his P.O. box so again I'll put his information down below so that you guys can get entered if you want and anyways he read my letter he gave me a shout out on his channel and my uh, subscriber count is starting to climb a little bit again same as it did when Dylan McCool read my letter on his channel so I've all, I say it every video, and I say this every video, but I say this every video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it, guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button right now and the bell notification, and hopefully we can continue to give you guys some really good content. Guys, remember, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. God bless. We love you. See you in the next upload.